and upload. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Monday, October 21st IPFS weekly call. Um, we're going to be doing kind of a community around the room show and tell. Um, and we're going to start with, with intros so that we know all the cool stuff that people are working on or excited about or what brings them to this call today. Um, I am your host for the day. I should update that in the notes. I'm Molly or Momac2 on the internet. Oh, and I can't even type my own name. There we go. Um, and I guess what am I most excited about today? I generally work on, on things IPFS project related, but um, I am super excited about uh, the recent textile launch about link shortening. And so I, will, I would love to talk about that today with people who are interested and similarly excited. That's me. Ollie, how about you go next? Oh, hey. Um, Ollie, Ollie Zilla on the internet. I am mostly working on um, making sure that the IPFS gateway infrastructure and next up the bootstrappers, basically all of the bits of IPFS that we run so that people can find each other and find their content in all sorts of situations, uh, make sure that runs really well and that don't get woken up with alarms. Like we just want it to run smoothly and calmly across all time. That's the plan. Uh, I don't have anything top of mind for excitements right now, but um, I'll hand over to Dietrich for the next introduction. Hello, everybody. Nice to meet you. I have not met you before. My name is Dietrich. I'm in San Francisco right now, and I work on uh, browser integration, amongst other things, at uh, MyPFS. Uh, if you uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about that on the IPFS blog, there's a post about a week and a half, two weeks ago, uh, that kind of explains what we've been doing with browsers and where we want to go next year. And feel free to ask me if you have any questions. And I'm Dietrich on most of the things. Do I get to pick somebody next? Hey, Jay, I pick you. Hey, Dietrich. Thank you, I'm Jay Carpenter. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and I am, right now, I am exploring uh, any potential integration between libp2p and session, in session initiation protocol. I'm kind of up to my ears in learning uh, session initiation protocol. And um, yeah, I also run the Desert Blockchain community here in Arizona, which is the largest blockchain community, over 1,800 members, and a uh, longtime fan of Protocol Labs and IPS. So let's see, Tanya, let's, we had a chance to chat. Please introduce yourself. I'm Tanya. I'm the founder of Altwork, and I'm currently exploring putting Altwork on IPFS. And a little bit about Altwork, it's a platform for freelancers, um, allowing them to submit client reviews, communicate with each other, submit content, and get rewarded for their efforts. Uh, let's see. I'd like to pick Jim. Um, hi, I'm Jim. I work on the um, um, test infrastructure project, which is building some uh, ability to spin up large tests across, uh, say, thousands of nodes so that we can integrate that into our release process and get some performance uh, measurements out of things. And uh, I have a 10 second demo, uh, maybe after everybody's done. It's only 10 seconds, so. Do you want to pick someone, Jim? Oh, I got to pick someone. Uh, oh, he didn't go. <laughs> Did Jessica go? No, but I can. Uh, my name is Jessica Schilling on the internet. I usually exist at Jessica Schilling, all one word. Note the spelling, it's a little bit weird. Um, I am more or less leading the IPFS documentation and developer user experience task force slash working group um, with the aim toward making 
to, towards being the docs that we want to see in the world. Um, we are, um, as a team, ramping up to actually launch a revamped ViewPress-based docs platform toward the end of the year. Um, so super excited. You can check out our repo. Um, lots of really cool things happening there at, IP, or at uh, github.com slash IPFS slash docs. And um, since we've got a lot of people on this call who haven't heard my spiel today, I'm going to post a link um, to a Google Docs forum that is actually a survey. So if you would like to be a beta tester on the new Docs site, um, we'd love to grab your contact details and uh, reach out, have some conversation, show you some cool things before the rest of the world gets to see them. That's all I got. Uh, do, do, do. Michael Burns, how about you? Hi, I'm sorry, I joined later. Are we doing introductions? Indeed we are. Oh, wonderful. Well, hello, I'm Michael Burns, and I work on the infrastructure uh, team at PL here, and I am uh, help run the IPFS gateway um, and the various other servery things that we use to kind of bootstrap our uh, distributed network. Um, yeah, I guess that's, that's kind of where I'm coming from. Um, so I'll be quick and throw the hot potato to, this will be hard since I am late, uh, Terry. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yep, just fine. Awesome. Sorry. I never know what's happening when I'm using the phone to dial. Um, I'm Terry Chadbourne. I am the lead for the Proto School project, which offers tutorials on decentralized web protocols and concepts. So mostly IPFS at this point. Um, I'm uh, on my way to a doctor's appointment, so I won't be able to show and tell anything today, but looking forward to hearing what other people are working on. And someone who can see the screen can pick the next person. David. Oh, all right, my turn. <laughs> You caught me. Uh, so hi everyone, I'm David. I've been here for a while, uh, but like two things that I'm excited. So like today uh, we merged the first uh, IPFS open problem. So if you haven't checked, there is this IPFS slash research repo where we are documenting like open problems um, that we have identified um, in the IPFS ecosystem, with peer-to-peer -peer ecosystem, and like peer-to-peer -peer in general. Uh, an open problem is categorically something that we don't have like a, a one size fits all solution it's something that like we are still exploring something that still like requires like new ideas um and so it's something that we are documenting to make sure to onboard new people to to think with us like solutions for those open problems this first one was about preserving uh user privacy and so in this open problem which i will post here a link in the chat in a second um uh, basically it goes from documenting like the uh, experiments that have been done in the epithetic system Things that we know from like the whole research and application uh, uh, ecosystem, and like what kind of like defines like a, a, a solution towards or a, a next step towards a complete solution uh, on this open problem. We have other six open problems coming up. Uh, they will be merged to either IPFS slash research or peer peer slash research, and you can check the pull request right now because well we are doing them uh, writing them in the open. Then the other thing I'm excited about is TestCrawl. So um, I guess today marks a day where we got two test plans running. One that showcases the VHT, like spawning a bunch of nodes and like, connecting all of them together and then doing a bunch of tests. And the other one that um, like showcases uh, spawning IPFS daemons using IPTB as a wrapper inside Docker containers and transferring files. Like, so like sounds simple and complex at the same time, it's, it was like a good milestone because like test ground is so many moving pieces and like this kind of like sets the foundation necessary to write the rest of the test plans. So it was a nice achievement. Um, and I guess attached to this achievement, there is also like a new tutorial if you are interested on like learning how to use GoIPFS as a library rather than as a daemon, you can go and check out the pull request that I will link uh, here. But essentially the tutorial is done. It's just now on content review and you can learn how to spawn your GoIPFS node as an in-process thing that runs from within your Go code so that you don't have to run like a separate process and maintain that process and so on. And you can use the shiny uh, new core API that Magic have been working on uh, some quarters ago. So that is exciting. 
<laughs> okay, I need to post a lot of links here. <laughs> you just mentioned three awesome things, which I added to the notes <laughs> section. So links, uh, links appreciated. We'll get through thank you. those we can. Thank you. You want to call the next person? Maybe of course. Uh, Johnny, Johnny Crunch, are you there? Howdy, y'all. Um, I'm Johnny Crunch on the internet. I work on identity, mostly in health, the healthcare space and verifiable credentials. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm the author of IPID, so Interplanetary Identifiers, which is a method in the decentralized identifiers space. Um, right now, I'm mostly working on interoperability with zero knowledge proofs. Uh, mostly that's with the Sovereign uh, test framework. Uh, and also for um, Lib, using libp2p as service endpoints to create a connection to do something called did authentication. So how do you connect, authenticate, I am who I say I am, using interoperable standards over different did methods. Very exciting, but I'm way down in the weeds of the zero knowledge proofs. Oh yeah, and I guess I need to uh, pick someone, and I guess I think Dirk, you're next. Thanks. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Dirk. I work on uh, BitSwap stuff at the moment. I used to be a JavaScript programmer, but then uh, I got dragged into the GoLands, which is kind of fun. Um, so yeah, I'm working on kind of extending the BitSwap protocol to make it uh, make it so it's easy to know where blocks are in the system, <clears throat> um, which would help us make it a little bit more efficient. And I am excited about test grounds, like David and Jim because my next stage is to start testing the changes I've made. So Jim, I'd love to see your demo uh, if there's a little bit of time at the end. Um, I'm also excited to learn how to pronounce Lytle's real name, Lytle. Uh, it's Marcin. Marcin. Yeah. It's like a rare occasion that you can hear it. <laughs> I'm glad this is recorded. Uh, yep. Uh, so. I'm Lido, and uh, I'm working on IPFS in web browsers, and recently, like specifically on uh, embedding JS IPFS in Brave, um, making it like more seamless to uh, enable IPFS integrations in that browser. But uh, we have a browser extension which I maintain, which works in all the browsers. And uh, things I uh, I've been like excited and. Maybe I can demo at the end if that time allows uh, one uh, pre-caching some uh, artifacts with uh, extension itself. So we now are able to have a web UI uh, being instantly available, even in offline environments. And another thing uh, in collaboration with uh, ENS project, uh, we are uh, we are able to bridge the gap between ENS and all DNS infrastructure. And as a part of that, we got a, a ETH link gate, which is both a DNS link gateway and HTTP gateway for IPFS websites. Um, uh, and uh, what we did recently is to enable IPFS companion to recover from uh, DNS failures. So, if a DNS lookup for ENS name fails, we are able to recover uh, by opening it over uh, ETH link gateway. Um, yep. I'm not sure if there is anyone left. Is there anyone left? I will, yep, back to you, Molly. Awesome, awesome, thank you. I added that one. Uh, is that demoable, the resolving .ENS domains with companion? Ho or is it hopefully. Still Hopefully. All right, okay. All right, I'll give you, uh, you're, you're later in the list, so hopefully there's a uh, time to configure things. Cool, I, uh, I brainstormed some, some items in our show and tell section as people were uh, mentioning super cool stuff that they're working on, the, the team's demoable, but feel free to add other demo items here if I missed one, or if there is a particularly demoable component of the work that you're doing um, that I did not catch. Um, addition, super welcome. The, the one that I mentioned, which is, which is not work that, that I'm doing, but is super cool work that the, the textile team shared out uh, last week on Friday. Um, they've built this really cool thing called boom.fyi, 
which is, um, they, they call it exploding links, but it's effectively a link shortener um, on top of IPFS, which allows you to do kind of permissioning on short links so that if you send someone a short link of some IPFS content, um, you can control uh, whether or not they can forward it to other people, how many times they can use it, how long they can use it for. Um, and there's a, a snazzy FAQ section here that lets you do some more like privacy and permissioning on top of sharing chunks of IPFS content um, using uh, their cafe nodes to do kind of the intermediary um, short link resolution um, to find content. And they have a nice, yeah, a nice blog post about it as well um, that explains like how it happens and snazzy diagrams and all that good stuff. So highly recommend people to check it out. David, this, this came to mind for me because I was thinking of your, um, the, the post you have so far is about private content on IPFS and this this is like an approach to uh, how to do kind of the privacy or revocation of content on IPFS by um, not not actually giving people the root CID, but giving people a stream of blocks and then uh, breaking the connection between the short link and what blocks they relate to. So yeah, I think it's super cool. I'm sure the textile team would love people's feedback if they if folks have it. Um, let me find my list of things. How about uh, Molly? How do they do the encryption? The encryption of, of the content? I think they, they encrypt content as they upload it. Um, and with the, but the, with the encryption key, I think um, one thing that I saw uh, Juan demo before was using the fragment, the hash fragment for the decryption key. So you basically, like within the URL, pass it and the, and the JavaScript actually will pull the, the full um, URL, including the fragment. And so this is, I'm actually heavy into this right now with the W3C about overloading the use of the fragment. Uh, and, and, and I like to use it for a decryption key, but it, it's um, overloaded and actually not a standardized method of actually using uh, the hash fragment. Yeah, I, I don't know whether or not they're using the, the hash fragment. I would imagine not. They're kind of using a, a decrypting gateway model. Oops, where did this go? Um, so I think they're empowering people to kind of choose their own decryption key to kind of uh, like, yeah, try and abstract all of the permissioning side um, away from the, the end consumer of the data. But I uh, highly recommend if, if you read the, the article, that probably is a good start. And then you can talk to the textile folks specifically about what's happening under the hood. I imagine it's all open in some repo somewhere. So you can actually look at how it's working. Good question. Alrighty. Jim, do you have a demo? Uh, yes. Um, they started doing construction next door to me. So the sounds really terrible. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> this is a very short demo though. So. Okay, so, okay, you should be able to see the screen. So this is test ground, this is the project we're working on. Uh, pull requests are here. Um, the latest thing, I just got this working on the weekend. Um, it doesn't really look like much, but I'll just run it. Um, it's building a Docker image, it's putting IPFS into the Docker image, and then it's spinning up two versions of this Docker image. It dropped, it generated a 100 megabyte random file in one, and then the second Docker image communicated over the, the sync API that Ra Raul built and uh, transferred that to the second node. And then it timed it as a JSON and also sent the JSON up to Elasticsearch. So that's all it looks like. It doesn't look like anything. We'll probably hide it behind a web, web UI or something. Um, but this is sort of interesting because we can take this and we can uh, providing, we can run the Docker and schedule the Docker instances across many, many servers you can run really really large tests so um i'm going to stop sharing and just uh mute because it's really noisy here why why do you send it to Elasticsearch? um it's just a place to, to to capture all the um json output um all the the trace and the logs and the events and it, just a big bucket we could put everything into Elasticsearch has some nice um graphing capabilities and search capabilities. So um, we, there's many, many technologies we can choose. So that's just the one that uh, is in wide use already throughout the company. So it seemed like a good one to choose. Super cool. Thank you.
if you have a link to the code behind that awesome demo, maybe stick it in the notes so that other people can repro themselves. Cool, cool, cool. Um, oh, I guess something else I added to the notes. Um, so a couple of humans were at Diffusion this past um, weekend. Hugo and Vasco both both were were there in Berlin, manning a libp2p IPFS help desk. And the folks who ended up actually winning the prize um, at, for the Diffusion Hackathon used IPFS in their um, in their demo to create a, a CI/CD pipeline. Um, so kind of also connected to to the work that that I know that um, Dirk and and our test ground humans are are thinking about. Um, so they have here, I guess, this description um, talks more about what it does, and then there's a link to a GitHub repo. Um, a, yeah, effectively a decentralized netlifey, or however you pronounce that. That's how I pronounce it. Um, so I thought that was really cool. Awesome. Super cool that people are, are building stuff on IPFS in, um, in hackathons. David, do you want to walk us really quickly through the open problems or where to look at them? Uh, yeah. So, um, well, if you, I listed two, two links to more open problems, um, one in IPFS research and another one in Node. Uh, should I share my screen? Yes. I can click on links if you want, but up to you. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. Let me just get it ready. Firefox. All right. So this is going to be a little bit like a repetition of what I shared before, but like with like actual visualization. So we have now these repos, like IPFS slash research and we could appear research. Um, and in these repos, we will be documenting like things that we declare as like open problems, things that we don't have a solution yet, or at least we don't have a complete solution and we will like more help to figure it out. Uh, you can see that like the first one that got merged today was this like preserve users privacy. Um, and in this open problem, you will see from a short description. So if you want to just like, like one uh, paragraph pitch to tell someone about like something that we're looking for or a longer description or even like more background like what, what has been done in the past i thought of uh like other terms to learn about and so on then uh, we jump into like the state of the art and like the state of the art we always have like two sections like within ipfs ecosystem like what has been done for example hey like privacy like require some sort of wire encryption, but again, like this is not the, the panacea, <laughs> like this is not the solution, but like, here, here's what we have done. Here's like idea, like suggestions of like things to look at on IPFS ecosystem. That encryption, like for example, this is a tool that they, like is like kind of like a, a file share application, but like that encrypts the files before, sh before sending, then capability systems, privacy and design networks, onion routing. So like a lot of things that have been tried on IPFS ecosystem that sometimes are not, like obvious that they exist yet. Like some people actually don't know, are not familiar about these yet. Then within the broad uh, research ecosystem, and this is where like we unpack the field even more and we go and explore other areas, right? From ICN to uh, like all sorts of like, so this is like linked or names of papers. Um, and so you get categories here from non-delay sensitive applications to delay sensitive applications to things about authorization, authentication, and accounting, data encryption, private communication, content routing, traffic analysis resistant approaches, private information retrieval, and others. And so this will be like an ever-growing list uh, of like references of a material we we find it's important for this open problem. So it like this often becomes kind of like a small survey of the space. And then uh, like some of the shortcomings, like, hey, like why we think like what has been developed so far uh, or deployed so far is not enough. Um, this is where we list the shortcomings and then like solving the problem, uh, what defines a complete solution. And also like, so we have kind of like this very good thing, but also bad in a way because we, we we get a lot of contributions from a lot of people in academia, in the industry, or even just like independent researchers and, and hackers to come and like contribute to our channels. What that typically creates is a bunch of threads everywhere. So like there's a lot of fragmentation of information. So like this also collects the information in one place. Um, and like, so you have like links to all of these like previous uh, discussions that existed um, in the past. So you should get a, can grab more and more ideas. So this is like one open problem. Um, as I was saying, we have others coming. Uh, if we go to the pull requests here, 
you will see that like there's three pull requests in draft mode. So this is still like even more raw than the others. Uh, there's like one ready to review. And so open problems as you can see, like getting bit swap and graph sync better with network smarts. So you might have um, recently watched the presentation from Burke on like improving bit swap a lot, but we believe there is still more to do. Then improving like layouts to represent data in a linked graph. So you might have heard about like the trickle DAG and the balance DAG and like all different graph layouts can give you different performances for the type of data that you're accessing. Some better for video, some better for like accessing packages in the network, some better to accessing like internet archives. Then there is human. Okay. We're awesome. But we're also we're also almost over. Well, we are over time. But I would love to really quickly let Lytle demo his thing. Um, of course. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, go that. ahead. All right. You got to feel like go go look at it. Ask questions there. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, hopefully it will be super fast. So here's a browser, right? Um, and here is IPFS companion running. IPFS thingy. Uh, so pay attention to the location bar. Uh, there's a website on ENS. Uh, and what's interesting here is I have like companion redirect disabled. So it's just, just there in the background, just uh, the recovery. So when we, someone tries to open uh, .eth and have IPFS uh, installed, they automatically get fallback in a separate tab. So the old address is still there in a dead tab. Uh, however, the, it recovered uh, in a new tab using this ETH link gateway. However, what happens if we enable gateway redirect? Someone is trying to open ETH website and they get automatically upgraded to local uh, gateway, they are using IPFS and uh, don't use that ETH.link uh, gateway at all. And what's interesting here is that I did it all using embedded JS IPFS in Brave. So there's like no third party software. Uh, we just, uh, someone went to settings, enabled uh, IPFS companion, switched to experimental embedded node, um, and it just works. Uh, at some point, we will support version without that link here. Uh, we are mostly waiting for next version of Go IPFS, but that's just like cosmetics. Um, that's it. That's my demo. I can do like super faster one, just just super fast. <laughs> uh, so it's super fast now uh, in Brave, embedded just IPFS. If you open Web UI, it's uh, just opening super fast because it's already there pre cached. Uh, that's it. That's my demo. Woohoo! Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the awesome demos. Appreciate all of the snazzy stuff that's happening. And uh, unfortunately, many folks have to hop off to a uh, core implementations meeting, which is starting four minutes ago. Um, but thank you for a wonderful Monday meeting, and see you all next week in our happy IPFS weekly calls.